Hey everyone, welcome to another lecture looking at cranial nerves, starting with cranial nerve 1, which is the nerve of olfaction. Okay, so it's the nerve of smell, it's concerned with smell. That's what the cranial nerve 1 does. The nucleus is from the brain. Okay, so they are distributed everywhere cerebrum, pons, medulla. We'll see um, as we go. Now, also remember there are pairs of these nerves okay so there's one on each side now the cranial nerve one is purely a sensory nerve now as we go along we'll see some are sensory some are motor and some are mixed but cranial nerve one olfaction which tells your brain about smell is all sensory then we have the cranial nerve two the optic nerve okay now as you might have wondered by now optic nerve is concerned with vision okay now this is the second cranial nerve which comes from the cranial cortex the brain cortex or the cerebrum okay um, no other nerves come from the cortex itself but it's only the cranial nerve one and two which are from the cortex now since it's concerned with vision it is also a sensory nerve okay so cranial nerve 2 is concerned with vision and it is a sensory nerve okay so this is what you have to remember okay so we got 12 cranial nerves cranial nerve 1 is olfactory cranial nerve 2 is optic we'll also go how can you remember the way i remember these is uta fagua uta fagua okay so olfactory optic one and two and rest of the nerves will go one by one um, if you look at this diagram this is basically a cut section of the brain okay so we link looking from the underneath the brain after we cut it so we can see all the centers okay so after the second nerve the third nerve is oculomotor oculomotor now the first two nerves we knew were from the cerebrum or the cerebral cortex but the third nerve as we already talked about is from the midbrain okay midbrain the other difference is that cranial nerve one the olfactory nerve is related to smell and is obviously sensory and the cranial nerve two is also sensory but when you come to cranial nerve three it is a motor nerve okay it is concerned with eye movements okay now apart from the lateral rectus muscle which is supplied with the sixth nerve and the superior oblique muscle all the eye muscles are supplied by the third nerve okay so all the eye muscles are supplied by the third nerve except superior oblique which is by the fourth nerve and lateral rectus which is by the sixth nerve okay so medial rectus superior rectus all others are supplied by uh, and all the other muscles are supplied by the third nerve. Okay, so cranial nerve four also comes from the midbrain. So one and two are coming from the cerebrum. Cranial nerve three and four are coming from the midbrain. Okay, all right. So we have midbrain, pons, and medulla. So three and four are midbrain. Now cranial nerve four, like cranial nerve three, is also a motor nerve and it's also concerned with eye movement. So three and four are pretty similar to each other as you know they are mainly concerned with the motor functions of the eye okay the muscle supplied by this is superior oblique okay so all the eye muscles are by cranial nerve 3 but cranial nerve 4 supplies superior oblique and cranial nerve 6 supplies lateral rectus okay so these are the muscles of the eye and their nerve supply then cranial nerve 5 okay now this now the nucleus is in the pons first two nerves the nucleus is in the cerebral cortex the cerebrum second two nerves so the cranial nerve three and four the nucleus is in the midbrain now we're going down now and now the nucleus is in pons for cranial nerve five also the difference now is that this nerve is both sensory and motor okay sensory to the face to the tongue and motor to the muscles of mastication okay so 
when you're masticating, when you're chewing, when you're eating something, the muscles that move are happening because of cranial nerve 5. Okay, so cranial nerve 1 and 2 pure sensory are in the cerebral cortex, cranial nerve 3 and 4 purely motor are in the midbrain, and cranial nerve 5 is the nucleus is in the pons. Okay, so it's got sensory and motor now. Okay, all right. So next is the cranial nerve 6, which is called the abducense nerve. Abducense nerve. Remember when I was talking about eye movements, I said lateral rectus is supplied with a sixth nerve. So this is where the abducense nerve comes into play. Now, as we're going down, so cranial nerve 6 is at the pontomedullary junction. Okay, pontomedullary junction. So if you remember the structures from top to bottom, it's midbrain, pons, and medulla. Now this is also uh, motor nerve like three and four, and it's also concerned with eye movements, but it only supplies the lateral rectus muscle, lateral rectus muscle, so LR is six, okay. Now the next nerve, the very, very important nerve, something we hear about every now and then, is cranial nerve seven, is the facial nerve, okay. Like the cranial nerve 6, its nucleus is also at the pontomedullary junction. Okay, so that's cranial nerve 7. 1 and 2, cerebrum. 3 and 4, pons. 5, also, sorry, 3 and 4, midbrain. 5 is pons. And then 6 and 7 is pontomedullary junction. Now, it's got sensory and motor as well, like cranial nerve 5. Okay, sensory is the taste. Okay, now the taste is very, very important to understand because the taste sensation kind of overlaps. So the anterior two third of the tongue is by the facial nerve. So if you lose facial nerve, if there is damage to facial nerve, that's where you will lose your taste. Okay, and then basically facial expression muscles are by the facial nerve. Very, very simple to remember. Facial nerve, facial expression. Facial nerve, facial expression. But mastication, chewing, is by cranial nerve 5. Okay, also salivation is cranial nerve 7 or the facial nerve. Lacrimation, salivation, facial ex expression, all this is by the cranial nerve 7 or the facial nerve. Now, most of the exam questions are related to facial nerve. So one day we'll make a video on uh, in-depth facial nerve. Now the cranial nerve 8 is the vestibulocochlear nerve. Vestibulocochlear nerve. The word vestibulocochlear is also correlated with the auditory nerve. Okay, so this is also known as the auditory nerve. Now it's very important and very easy to remember. Auditory is something related to the ear. Okay, so what does the ear do? It helps you in hearing and helps you in balance. Hearing and balance. That's what the auditory system does. So it's a sensory nerve. There's no motor function of the ear, remember? So balance and hearing. Okay, that's the cranial nerve 8. That's the auditory nerve. Okay, so sensory, pure sensory nerve. All right. So easy. I'm going easy, nicely, simple so far. Okay. Now, this is again at the pontomedullary junction. Okay. So, we've seen from cranial nerve 6, 7, 8, pontomedullary junction. We started from cerebrum for 1 and 2, midbrain for 3 and 4, pons for 5, and the last three nerves, 6, 7, 8, the nuclei has been at the pontomedullary junction. All right. All right, next nerve is cranial nerve 9, is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It's also important to know the names and their English meaning. So, glosso is tongue, pharyngeal is pharynx. Okay, now we are moving to the medulla. So, cranial nerve 9, the nuclei is at the medulla. Again, glosso, pharyngeal, cranial nerve 9, glosso, tongue, pharyngeal, pharynx. All right, so. Okay, so sensory is again the taste. Okay, so if you look at cranial nerve 7, that's the facial nerve, it brings the taste from the anterior two third of the tongue. So, what about the posterior one third? That's where cranial nerve 9 is. Okay, it brings taste from the posterior one third of the tongue, the pharynx. 
and the surrounding area. So I guess so cranial nerve 9 is very, very important. It also is responsible for the carotid sinus and body. Okay, so uh, when you read about common carotid artery in the bifurcation, there are some receptors that sense the pressure. So chemo and the baroreceptors um, are the sensations are taken by the cranial nerve 9. Okay then you have the cranial nerve 10 okay so cranial nerve 10 is a vagus nerve this is also very very important nerve it basically is involved in the whole of the parasympathetic activity of the body parasympathetic activity of the body okay so it decreases the heart rate for example however it is also sensory so it's sensory and motor vagus okay vagus is a very very important nerve um, we have learned about vagus nerve and its effect a lot of diseases and a lot of times in the physiology okay so sensory to ear pharynx and larynx that's what the vagus nerve is right so there's some overlap for cranial nerve 9 and 10 okay it also supplies a sensory supply to the thorax and abdomen but you have to remember the word parasympathetic when you think of vagus it's also motor to um, certain movements, so swallowing and speech. Okay, so that's where cranial nerve 10 comes in. Also the cuff, right? So the cuff reflex is a basically a vagal reflex. So swallow, switch, speech, cuff, they're all um, vagus nerve mediated. And as I said, it's parathympathetic, so decreases the heart rate, but increases the GI motility. Okay, so that's a vagus nerve. That's the 10th cranial nerve. Also, uh, you know, we, we are almost reaching the medulla. Cranial nerve 11 is the accessory. It's also the cranial accessory, but it also has a spinal accessory component. Okay. So it's an accessory nerve. Okay. So it's got a cranial accessory and a spinal accessory component. It, the nucleus is again situated at the medulla. Now, it's very easy to remember as you go down from 1 to 12, as you go down, the nuclei are in the order of so midbrain, pons, and medulla. Now the lower nerves are in the medulla. It's motor to the shoulder, and it causes shoulder shrugging because it supplies the muscles which cause the shoulder shrugging. Okay, so that's the cranial nerve 11. So that's the cranial accessory part. Okay, it's also as I said. Remember that it also has a spinal accessory part the last nerve is cranial nerve 12 also called as a hypoglossal nerve now remember when we talked about the cranial nerve 9 i told you guys that the glossal word refers to the tongue so what would a hypoglossal nerve be related to very simple the tongue okay so the cranial nerve 12 is related to the tongue okay it is responsible for the movements of the tongue okay so it so that summarizes our cranial nerves hope you enjoy the video please coming back for more thank you